This is the Definitely Uncertain Podcast, brought to you by Gold Rock Capital. Each week, we look at how high net worth families can improve their lives, decisions, and investments in a deeply uncertain world. We always aim to provide practical information, even if we can't offer specific investment advice. This is the Definitely Uncertain Podcast, and my name is Jaron Rockman, and I'm a partner at Gold Rock Capital the more than 20-year-old multifamily office servicing high net worth families in Israel and around the world. And back on the podcast for a second time by popular demand, Daniel Krauss. Hi, Dan. How are you? I'm great, Darren. How are you? <laughs> great. Terrific. Thanks for coming back on. Daniel is, well, he's one of my favorite New Yorkers, because firstly, because he's so understated. He's the co-founder and a partner at Blue Door Asset Management. Prior to that, he was a macro analyst at Amiga Advisors, and before that, an equity research analyst at UBS. And as I think I said last time, is one of the smartest macro thinkers that I know. And given that we are wrapping up corporate earnings season in the United States, it seemed that you know this was a really consequential earnings season, and thought we'd ask Dan to give some of his views about how that's played out. And the reason that it's such a consequential season is because with 2022 being a year where interest rates were pushed up dramatically, you know, there is this ongoing question as to what extent this is impacting the profits of companies, because that, of course, then impacts employment, which then impacts back to inflation, which is the thing that everybody seems to be most concerned about. So Dan, give us a brief overview of what we've learned in corporate earnings season so far. Okay, so looking at 4Q22, earnings came in down about 2% in Europe. Now, this compares with 7% growth in nominal GDP during that period. To see negative 2% on earnings and positive 7% in nominal GDP is actually quite unusual. And it really emphasizes the importance of not just looking at the absolute growth rate, but the components that make up that growth rate. So, for instance, if we had 7% nominal growth and 5% of that was real and 2% was inflation, the historical relationship would imply that earnings would have been up in the mid-teens, right, based on what we've seen historically. But when so much of the rise in GDP is inflation, it negatively impacts margins. And so putting numbers to that, revenues were up close to 6% in the fourth quarter of 22, while earnings were down 2%. And so you can see a very clear hit to margins profitability over that period. Uh, now, we can slice this several different ways. Right. So if you look from an industry perspective, you know, what's happening beneath the surface is that certain industries that benefit from inflation, like energy, earnings were up 60 percent. Right. Industrial earnings were up significantly. They were up more than 20 percent. On the other side, discretionary, consumer discretionary saw an 11 percent decline in earnings. Uh, technology saw a 9 percent decline and financials saw a 10 percent decline. And so there's a very large bifurcations underneath the index headline. Another way to slice it is that industries that came out of COVID over earning have really seen a significant hit to their bottom line. Whereas the industries that were under earning for years heading into COVID have now seen a shift that has helped them and helped them be more resilient on the earning. And so there's a few implications of this. Implication number one is when you listen to commentators talk about earning season, it's very much a choose your own adventure, right? There's something <laughs> there for everybody. I remember those books. I had them as a kid. Yeah, exactly. And so if you want to talk about how negative earnings were, you could talk about the margin degradation. You could talk about discretionary being down 11%, financials down 10%. If you want to talk about how resilient earnings have been, you look at industrial that have done quite well. I think the bottom line is that there are the implications of the rising inflation rates are being felt. The energy, not a great indication on what's going on because they are the obvious beneficiaries. Right. The industrial side is still benefiting. In fact, the part of the economy that is the last ones that are still benefiting from the fiscal stimulus. There's a lot of infrastructure and green energy stimulus sure. and incentives to manufacture domestically. Right. Uh, so the bifurcation is between more cyclical sectors on one side versus the more sort of standard, boring energy industrials, et cetera, on the other, what you might call value sectors. And then the second bifurcation that you're pointing out to is between the COVID beneficiaries and really just reversion for both the COVID beneficiaries and maybe the ones that didn't, as spending shifts away from those sectors back to where maybe it would have been once upon a time. 
Yeah, and it's important to note that those bifurcations both have something to do with the shift in stimulus being towards certain areas and away from others. So initially, the stimulus was all consumer driven, yeah. and consumer discretionary and tech all benefited big from that. Give people, and now give people lots of money, let them spend it. Exactly, and then you get um, you have now the stimulus is more industrial driven, uh, and so now you're seeing earnings growth shift in that direction. Uh, yeah, so we're so, seeing those bifurcations play out. And that's, and that's before the CHIPS Act really starts to throw money into the That's even before the CHIPS Act, right. But the infrastructure that was passed a couple of years ago, that's coming through. Um, you are seeing like the Inflation Reduction Act is having some impact. Right. Okay, very cool. All right. Well, Dan, thank you very much. I should have said this at the beginning. It's the 22nd of February. So when we're recording this, it'll only go out a few days after. This may be slightly dated, but probably not too much. And Dan, your analysis is as sharp and as interesting as ever. So really, thank you. Thanks very much for having me, Dan. All right. And uh, look out for more podcasts coming your way soon.